When you're building a melody section for your song, whether it's a verse, a chorus, or a hook, the best way to look at them is in phrases. Each section can contain one or more melodic phrases that sit on top of a chord progression. Each of those phrases can use stable melody notes and unstable notes in relationship to the background chord. And these melodic phrases can be open-ended or closed. Together with the harmony, a melodic phrase as a whole might sound open-ended or closed. The rhythm underneath and the lyrics, if there are any, will complete the overall open or closed feel. Depending on the order of these phrases, this could make a question and answer motif. Let's take a simple example and run with it to see what kind of phrases we can come up with. Let's work with the groove we've used in one of the previous sections. One, two, three. Three, four. It's two bars of an E groove with a bass line in it, followed by a C chord in an inversion and a D chord. Now, both these last chords are played as an inversion with the fifth in the bass to thicken the groove a little bit. Let's say I came up with a short lyric and puzzled with the rhythmic feel of it. On top of this four-bar section, I came up with a simple rhythm that consists of three phrases. One phrase for the two bars of E groove, and one each for the C and D chord. The rhythm sounds like this. This construction can be seen as asymmetric because it has an A, B, B construction. The length of the last two phrases together equals the length of the first phrase, two bars. Now this is an important tool for a songwriter using asymmetry in melodies and chord progressions. We'll dig into that later on. Uh, now that we have chords and the rhythm for a melody, we can start composing the melodic phrases. The chords we have are an E5 to a C, to a D. Now the C and D chords come from an E minor scale. So let's start with the E aeolian as our first pool of notes to fish melody notes from. This is the first melody I came up with using the E aeolian mode. As you can hear, the melody starts low and ends high. This is an ascending melodic line and works great as an opening line in a question and answer form. Now, as you know, whenever you ask a question, your voice raises in pitch at the end. This also works for melodic phrases. The amount of openness for an ascending melodic line is generally more than for a descending line. What comes up must come down. The D note at the end of the first phrase is the flat at seventh on top of the E5 chord. It's a relatively weak note, not a chord tone, but part of the E Aeolian minor scale. And it sounds pretty good. The end note of a melodic phrase is the one that generally sticks to your ear. Its quality will direct the melody. Is it a stable note or does it want to resolve to a more stable situation. In this case, the D note is asking for more. The melodic phrase sounds open. There is a question asked, and it begs for an answer phrase. If I were to change the phrase, I'd get a different effect. The phrase still goes up much like a question, but now the ending note is an E. That's the root of the chord that we're on, and the tonic of the key we're playing or singing in. This phrase is great to attract attention, but by ending on a strong chord tone, we're kind of contradicting the question aspect of it. 
One thing about this melody is that on the first strong beat, which is beat one of the first bar, we're also playing a D note. The flat of seventh, again, kind of a weak note to start a section off with. This would work great if we were in a jazzy environment and we want to add a lot of color to the chords by adding extensions through the melody, sevenths, ninths, thirteenths, and so on. But the groove that we have is a poppy rock eighth feel. We want to get down and dirty, and a high brown melody will just not work. How about playing a melod melodic phrase like this? The note on beat one is now the root of the chord and tonic of the scale E. We're approaching it from a lower B note, which is a 5-1 melody progression. It's very strong. And on top of that, we're repeating the E note a couple of times. It definitely sticks to your ear. The general direction of the phrase is still ascending, and the scale is still the E Aeolian minor scale. The last note is a high B note, again the fifth. Although this is a strong chord tone, when we're placing it at the end of a phrase, it feels like the phrase could go on. We need an answer. You want more. But the question that's being asked is an odd one. Because of the C note, played before, right before the B note. It's a question that bends down in pitch at the end. Kind of a reflective question, more contemplative or maybe even rhetorical. We'd like to have a stronger melodic line, more of an opening statement than a question. A phrase that is bold, attracts attention and remains open for follow-up. Perhaps an edgy subset of the Aeolian scale would be the way, best way to go. Let's try out a bluesy melody built from an E minor pentatonic scale. In this melody I've used the minor pentatonic scale, a subset of the Aeolian minor scale, and I've used that one to fish my melody notes from. This gives the melody an edgy, rough character, mainly because of the intervallic jumps that are a bit bigger than what you would find in the Aeolian minor scale. And I'm starting off with an enormous jump in the melody, going up from a low B note to a high B, which is a full octave. Now this attracts a lot of attention, and the jump target note will get a lot of stress. The repetition makes sure that this note sticks to the ear. It's the fifth of the background chord E5. And it's also the fifth of the scale we're using. In this case, it feels like a strong note. The tendency for the melody after a large jump like this is to want to go down again. This is almost always done immediately after the large jump to release stress. This tendency is called gap filling, and it is a natural feel that occurs after the melody has made a large jump up or down. The space between those notes has become so big that the gap beckons to be filled. In my melody I just added a little more stress by going up again before moving down. As you can hear this gap filling changes the ascending line of the original melody that we had. It now becomes an arch going up and then coming down again. If you look at the tab of this exercise, that arched contour of the melody becomes very clear. Now this is the second contour we can shape our melody in, the ascending melody and the arched melody. The contour or shape of the melody you use is a very important aspect of your writing, whether you're writing a melody for a lyric or for a melodic hook. A melody that rises, especially at the end, sounds like a question. That's because we use those pitch changes in our speech. A melody that goes up and down sounds more like a statement, where the accented note is somewhere in the middle on the top of the arch. 
If this is used for a lyric, the word or words sung at the top of the arch will get the most stress. Depending on the pitch of the starting and ending note, the arch will be complete or incomplete. If you start and end on the same note, the arch is complete, going up and down, ending on the same note. If the sentence or statement you made has a complete arch, the feel at the end will resemble the feel at the, at the very beginning. You end it where you started. In this case, I started on a low B and ended on a G above the B. It's not a complete arch and it feels like there is more to the statement, which works for our four bar chord progression because of the, the design of our rhythmic pattern. <laughs> 